Thank you very much. And first of all, I would like to thank the organizers for inviting me to this nice conference and this nice case. So I, my talk is related to another part of uh, the classical work of Hitler, so namely to indices of vector fields. So let me first briefly recall the existing notions of uh, indices of vector fields. So there's first the notion of radial index of a vector field on a on a singular variety, which goes back to Malay and then Schwarz. And then, uh, in this uh, very important uh, paper, Thomas Monziade and Verhofsky introduced another type of index of a vector field on an isolated hypersurface singularity. And later, uh, Gede and Suva, they generalized it to uh, complete intersection singularity. And this is now nowadays called the GSV index. And uh, another uh, invariant which I want to consider is the Euler obstruction, which was introduced uh, in, uh, so there is an important paper, it was introduced by McPherson, but there's an important paper by Bas Lenné and Peter on uh, this uh, field. So I listed only uh, one, two of the most important pa uh, papers. There are other papers, of course. I didn't list all, but you can find all the stuff in the book of uh, paper uh, Jean-Paul and uh, Katsuo, uh, which is now which is now available in uh, Springer Lecture. So there are corresponding notions for singular points of one form from singular varieties. So for smooth varieties, there's no difference between vector fields and one forms. But in singular varieties, uh, there are differences, but there are corresponding notions for singular points also, of <coughs> on singular varieties. The aim of my talk is to generalize these indices uh, to uh, the uh, germ with an action of a finite group G. And uh, so there are si we have similar notions uh, for vector fields and one forms. But in my talk, I want to restrict to one form for, for simplicity and also for uh, the reason that uh, I want to consider the Euler obstruction. The Euler obstruction was considered by and was introduced by Max Wilson for one form. For one form. This is one reason. Another reason is that if you consider the local Euler obstruction of a function, you have a gradient vector field. And you need some effort to make the gradient vector field tailor to the variety. And this, for one form, this is more easy because you simply can take the differential of the function from Tf. Therefore, I restrict to a, a complex one form in my form. So all these indices, they satisfy the poincare hopf theorem, which means that for complex manifolds, compact manifolds, uh, the sum of the indices is uh, the uh, Euler characteristic of the variety. And this is the point where we start our generalization, namely we consider the, the equivalent Euler characteristic as it was introduced by uh, Verdier and Tom Deek. This is, they introduced this equivalent Euler characteristic as an element of the Bernstein. So first, I have to uh, to talk uh, to introduce the Bernstein ring. What is the Bernstein ring? So we start with a finite group G, and a G set is a set with an action of uh, this group G. We call this G set irreducible if the action is transitive. <coughs> and then the Bernstein ring is defined as the Grotendi group of finite G sets three sets of finite elements. So this is the, uh, the abelian group generated by the isomorphism classes of finite G, set, G sets modulo the relation that uh, the class of the disjoint union A and B is equal to the sum of the classes of A and B. So uh, this uh, Bernstein ring, so that 
in fact, we only, only if this is the group structure, there's also a ring structure which is given by the Cartesian product of the two G sets. But I won't consider this ring structure in my uh, talk, so this always I consider the Burnside ring as a group. And as a group, it is freely generated by the isomorphism classes of irreducible G sets. So, what are the isomorphism classes of irreducible G sets? So the standard example of an irreducible G set is simply the quotient the factor group of G by a sub subgroup H of G. And one has a one-to-one -one correspondence between the isomorphism classes of irreducible G sets and the contributive classes of subgroups of G, simply by uh, mapping uh, the contributive class of a subgroup H to the factor group G over H. So this means that the elements, the elements of the Burnside ring are uh, simply can be written in the, such a form as a sum over the contributive classes of subgroups of G uh, of these elements of these isomorphic class, uh, classes G over H with some integer coefficients A H. So let me. Uh, Briefly introduce two notions if one has if one has a subgroup H in G, one can consider like in representation theory, one can consider a restriction map and an induction map. The restriction map goes from the bigger group to the small Burnside ring of the bigger group to the Burnside ring of the smaller group, and it simply means that X, X which is considered as a G set, is considered the image is considered as an H set. The induction map goes the other way around. It goes from the Burnside ring of a smaller group to the Burnside ring of a bigger group. And you map X, X to uh, the Cartesian product of uh, G cross X. And you identify elements. So if an element of G is written uh, G, small g times H, small h, where H is from H, then if this is identified with the element G, H, X. So now we have the notion, I want to recall the notion of the equivariant oil characteristic as introduced by Verdi and Tom D. And so we consider a good topological space. Good means a topological space where the oil characteristic beha behaves additively. All the spaces that we are considering <coughs> will be good topological spaces. I consider a good topological space with an action of the group G. Let H be a subgroup of G, and I, let me introduce some notation. <coughs> so for a point X in V, I denote by G uh, index X the isotropy group of X, and I denote by V to the power h in brackets, I denote the, the set of all points in V such which have the isotropy group equal to h. And if I denote in brackets and this h with square brackets and brackets, then I mean I take the union over all represent k of the controversy class of h of these uh, sets V to the uh, power K. And then the equivariant Euler characteristic of the G space of the G space V is defined to be the sum over all controversy classes, and the coefficients are the Euler characters, the usual Euler characteristic of the set V H modulo G quotient R by G. So one uh, recovers the original Euler characteristic by considering the restriction map from the point from the restriction map from the Burnside ring BG to the Burnside ring of the trivial group. Of course, the Burnside ring of the trivial group is isomorphic to Z, and so we have a map mapping the isomorphism class of G mod H 
to simply the number of elements of G mod H. And then, the, under this restriction, the, the equivariant Euler characteristic goes to the simple Euler characteristic of the space, the usual Euler characteristic of the space. Then there's also an, another notion, and this is a notion which is considered by physicists, this is the notion of orbifold Euler characteristic of this term. And here, there's the defined the definition of the Euler, orbifold Euler characteristic. It is one over the order of elements, uh, one over the order of the group G, the sum of all conjugate or uh, pairs, or commuting pairs, the Euler characteristic of the set V, and here we have uh, G, this means the set generated by G and H, the subgroup generated by G and H. And uh, so we, one can recover also this orbifold Euler characteristic, one can recover from the equivariant Euler characteristic as follows. So we consider this a map small r, G or, which maps uh, the isomorphism class of G mod H to uh, the orbifold uh, Euler characteristic of the G mod H considered with a discrete topology and G. So in case that G is abelian, this is simply the number of elements of H. And so under this homomorphism, group homomorphism, uh, the equivariant Euler characteristic maps to the orbifold Euler characteristic of this pair, V common. So now let me uh, uh, show you how we define uh, the equivariant random red index. So we make use of the fact that these indices satisfy the quaternary hopf uh, theorem. And so we consider so uh, we consider a germ of a complex analytic variety of Q dimension n with the action of finite group H. So now my group is H because later I will consider the global situation and then my group is, will be G and H will be the isotropic group of a point. So I consider then we consider an H invariant Whitney stratification. This H invariant Whitney stratification means that all X in the stratum uh, VI have the same conjugacy class HI of isotropy subgroups, and the quotient of VI by H is connected. So you get such an H invariant Whitney uh, stratification, you get from an arbitrary Whitney stratification, and then you take union, unions and closures of a uh, strata. And they are transformed under the group, under the group act. So on this uh, germ of a complex analytic variety, I consider uh, the germ of a complex continuous H invariant one form with an isolated singularity at zero. With an isolated singular zeros at zero, singular point at zero. And I consider an H invariant radial extension of omega. Radial extension means that uh, we, this is a form which agrees with omega on a boundary of a neighborhood of my singular point zero. It has only isolated singular points on the strata, and if one stratum is embedded in, an, in another stratum, then it uh, extends radially to the other, to the uh, bigger stratum. To extend radially means for the one form, that the one form is positive on vectors which are radial. And you, uh, so you can, to, you can get an H invariant radial extension if you take an arbitrary radial extension, and then you take, for example, the mean over the root. You get an H invariant radial extension. And now, very important for our definition of the equivariant radial index is the following proposition that the number of singular points of this radial extension on a, is 
on a fixed stratum VI does not depend on the choice of this radial extension, and therefore depends only on omega. So this means in order to define the, the, the uh, index, we can sum over the structure. And this is the way we define our H equivariant radial index. So if this is defined, we take the sum over all our represent, represent, represents of orbits of singular points. So P bar is a, a, a point of the uh, factor space singular space of omega twiddle divided by h, quotient by h, and p is a point of a free image under the canonical map, a represent of representative, sorry, a representative of this orbit, and vp means the stratum which contains p. And then there is a, this uh, sign, so this sign corresponds to the fact that we are considering a co complex one form. And usually the index is uh, defined for real one forms. And there is a difference in the sign because there is a difference in the orientation of the complex dual space of CN and the complexification of the real dual space. And this, uh, uh, orient uh, change, this uh, different orientation is uh, result of the sign. So uh, this was the local equivariant uh, radial index and now we consider uh, the global situation, we consider complex analytic G variety of pure dimension N and uh, we consider a G invariant uh, one form on V with isolated single points. And so if we have P is such a singular point, then of course not the whole group acts on, uh, on the germ, VP, but only the isotropy group. The isotropy group, GP, acts on this germ. And therefore we have this index for the isotropy group, GP, radial index, GP invariant, invariant radial index defined, and it is an element of the bird side ring of the isotropic group GP. And now we have a Poincaré Hopf theorem such that if V is compact, then we can consider this induction map, so we have this induction map of this element of the bird side ring of GP, it maps to the bird side ring of G. We sum over all these uh, orbits, and then we get the equivariant Euler characteristic up to a sign. So this lives again in the Burnside ring of the group G. So let me give an example. Uh, so if uh, we let V be a germ of a complex analytic variety of dimension M with an action of a group G, and consider an H invariant analytic function germ on V. Then one has Milner cycle, so this is a situation considered, for example, by me. And so we, we have Milner fiber, and one can show that the radial index, at H equivalent radial index of PF, of the differential of F, is simply minus 1 to the power n minus 1 times the equivariant oil correct H equivariant oil characteristic of the Milner fiber M minus this class H over H minus 1. And this is simply the Milner, can be considered as a Milner number. The Milner number as an equivariant analog of the Milner number, and this lives in the Burnside ring of the group H. And so let me give more specific example, and in fact this is the, uh, the, 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 the motivation for us to consider uh, this uh, equivariant versions, because uh, there is in mi the mirror symmetry, I was also interested in mirror symmetry, and uh, 
Then in mirror symmetry, in old examples of mirror symmetry, you have the so-called Bergman Tübsch duality. And this uh, Bergman Tübsch duality is, can be explained as follows. So I, we consider a polynomial, a so-called invertible polynomial. This is the polynomial in n variables. And so this polynomial, if you write this polynomial in terms, this is a weighted homogeneous polynomial. And it has as many terms as it has variables. So if you write this with some coefficients a, a, i, and c, and if you write the monomials in the form x, j to the power e, i, j, then this exponent matrix is a matrix with non-negative entries, and the polynomial is called invertible if this matrix is invertible over q, or the rational numbers. Then, for such a polynomial, you can consider the maximum group of diagonal symmetries. This is the following group. This is a group uh, of all tuples of elements of non-zero complex numbers and tuples of non-zero complex numbers, which leaves the polynomial invariant. So if you multiply number one to x1, number n to x, x, and then the polynomial is less than x. This is the maximum group of diagonal symmetries. And now the discovery of Bergman and Hübsch was that somehow can uh, consider another polynomial, which corresponds to the transpose matrix. So you take this matrix of exponents and you transpose this matrix and then you get another polynomial. And one can see that, for example, Arnold's strange duality is a special case of the symmetry. So Arnold's strange duality can be, if you can find polynomials representing the 14 exceptional unimodal singularities, Singularity Arnold sense is given by this uh, transpose polynomial. So now we have the following result. So if you have, we consider the maximal group of symmetries of the polynomial uh, S and the maximal group of symmetries of the polynomial GS transpose, then you have a duality, there's a natural duality between these curves. And the ring, the, this duality is given as follows. So we consider the group of characters, G star of uh, G. And if one has a subgroup H of G, which is the valid by inclusion map I, then you can define a transpose group H3, transpose a dual group, simply by taking the kernel of this transpose map I star from G star to H star. And then you have a natural duality. So if you take uh, the isomorphism class of G mod H in BG, then you map it to G star modulo H transpose in BG star. There's a simple transposition, uh, proposition that the character group of the GF is simply the group, maximal group of isometries of the transpose polynomial as transpose. And there's a theorem of Fabian and me, which is published in uh, Bulletin of the London Society in 2012, which can be expressed as a special case, which can be expressed that our Milner number, which I defined two slides ago, uh, for the group GS transpose for the maximum group is equal to the image under this duality map, the G D G F of the minimum number of F with respect to the group the G F. More precisely, one can also define so as we had an orbifold oil characteristic, and in a, an analogous way, one can define or before random index. This is simply, we take the, uh, sorry, we take,
So you take the, the age, take the variance, the value of the index, and then you magnify this map RH or, which I introduced, uh, and this gives what we So this example continued. If you consider a subgroup H of the maximum group of isometries of F, then the, the orbifold indices of DF and DF transpose with respect to H, the group H, and H transpose, they coincide. This is already, this is another formulation of the result which we have in uh, the Moscow Mathematical Journal in 2012, which means that the Euler, reduced Euler frequency of the Milner fibers agree with coincides. Obviously, So now let me come to the equivalent GSV index. So the GSV index is defined for an isolated hypersurface or complete infection, so as I mentioned before. And so let us consider CN with action of G. Let me consider F1 of FK are G equivalent G invariant polymorphic function terms. And we consider the zero set of this K function terms at zero, and we consider a G invariant Whitney stratification, which now should also satisfy Fox's AS condition. This is we require because this condition guarantees that you have a Milner fibration. So we can uh, talk again of the Milner fiber of <coughs> this uh, thing. And then the story is similar as before. We take it. G invariant one form on V with an isolated singular point at zero. So I forgot to mention, so omega is defined on the ending space. So for, uh, the, the form is defined on the ending space and we re restrict it to, to V. And we take again a um, G invariant gradient extension as before. And then our definition of the G equivariant GSV index is that we take a singular sum. But now, the main difference is now that we take the equivariant gradient index on the Milner fiber. So here is the, uh, the main, uh, main difference that we take the gradient index on the Milner fiber. Again, this is uh, an element of the burn cycling of the group G. And then, of course, there is a known relation between the usual GSV index and the, the radial index, and this generalizes to this case as well. Only that we, you have to uh, to consider G equivariant version of all the, the uh, invariants, namely the GSV index, the G equivariant GSV index is radial, the G equivariant uh, radial index plus the G, G equivariant Euler characteristic of the Milner fiber M minus this element, this sum of unit element in uh, the Burns cycle. This corresponds somehow to the vector that the Milner the number, the Milner proper sign of the equivariant Milner number. Again, this is So now I come to the equivariant Euler characteristic. So therefore, I have to recall the, what the Euler abstraction uh, in the usual case is. And so I consider again my uh, uh, germ of complex analytic variety of pure dynamic N with an action of a finite group H. And Vi uh, is again an H invariant with next magnification. And then the local Euler abstraction of V at the point X in V is defined as the local Euler abstraction of the form dr squared, where dr squared is the radial one form dr squared r with the distance to the point X. <coughs> and let, so let me recall, briefly recall how this uh, local Euler abstraction. <laughs> This one form is defined. 
So you consider mesh dual bar of V, and you consider real dual mesh bundle on V hat, and then for eta, which has zero at <coughs> x, defines a section eta hat of this <laughs> dual mesh bundle outside the pre-image of the singular point x, dual mesh of x. And then this local order obstruction is defined as the obstruction to extending this eta hat, which is defined outside new, uh, the pre-image of x, to extend it to a new inverse of x. So this is the classical notion. And, uh, sorry, I forgot to, to mention that one defines such an invariant. This is uh, the oil structure of Vj with respect to Vi. It is defined to be the oil structure of Vj bar with respect to P, where P is a point in Vi, if Vi sits in the closure of Vj bar because one can show that this number is independent of the choice of this point Vi. And it is defined to be zero otherwise if you have no such a So this <coughs> is now sufficient to define our local uh, oil obstruction of the one for omega. So we consider again uh, an <coughs> invariant one form on V, on this term V, with respect to zero, it uh, should have isolated zero point at zero, and we consider A on the trivial in H invariant gradient extension, and then our H equivariant local order structure of omega is defined in a similar way. You take the sum over P bar over the orbits of H of the singular points with a sign, the sign is similar with also with respect to the fact that we are considering complex one form of the order of structure is defined for a real one form. And then we have here the index. Of the form omega, 
width of the H uh, equivariant gradient index, namely you take a double sum, you can sum over all J of the regular index of the form omega restricted to the J bar on the J bar, and then you take it with the coefficient, this coefficient is the sum over <coughs> J i of these relative Euler abstractions of to be the No, so what is now the uh, uh, relation between the equivariant of the Euler abstraction and the equivariant GSV index? For that purpose, we uh, introduce the equivariant local order abstraction of VN at zero, and this is of course simply defined by considering the H invariant. So the, the Euler abstraction without the H was something was the Euler abstraction of dr uh, r squared v0 and now we consider on both sides you consider the h equivariant versions so this gives an equivariant local Euler abstraction and the relation between this equivariant local Euler abstraction and the equivariant GSV index is that Equivariant of Euler abstraction is equal to the equivariant H equivariant GSV index plus minus 1 to the power n, some signs, times the Euler abstraction, local Euler H equivariant, local Euler abstraction of V at 0 minus minus 1 to the power n times the Euler H equivariant Euler characteristic of the mill. We are considering the GSV index situation, we are considering the situation of a uh, isolated complete intersection similarity. And so we have a minimum. And this formula also, of course also generalizes the usual formula without the H index. So let me finally come to the global oil abstraction. So now we consider a Weather projective sub variety with a G action. And then we have the global Euler abstraction defined in a similar way as we define the global regular index of the variety. Namely, we consider. Sorry. sorry. <laughs>
So I have one remark and one question. Uh, and the remark is that if you have a weakness stratification, we stratify the zero set of f in complex cases you have for free AF or even WF condition. It's well known. Because you said that you you require uh, uh, that uh, strat your stratification satisfies A F condition, but if it's weak, then it stratifies the zero set of F, it's for free. And then my question is whether you have, uh, because in, in, in uh, not equivalent uh, case, it's a very powerful and useful approach via conormal space. And the intersection theorem is a conormal space when you and then you get the Euler of traction gives uh, the bijection between constructive functions and the Lagrangian cycles. Do you have a similar approach for your equivalent? No, unfortunately, uh, we like to, uh, of course, one of all of our goals would be to uh, express these indices also as uh, equivalent intersection numbers. Yeah. But uh, we don't, do not know of a uh, notion of an equivariant intersection number. So, uh, also, so also, uh, this is one point which we uh, cannot solve at the moment. If you have G equivariant intersection numbers, but maybe we are experts who know better. And the other point is also that we somehow avoided the Nash low up because we also don't have an H equivariant version of uh, the Nash, the Nash low up. Because uh, if no conormal space replaces the natural flow up. It's, it's, it's related somehow, you know. Yeah. So maybe, I don't know, but is there, does there exist a, a, a notion of an equivariant to normal space? No, no. It seems to be difficult. Okay. <coughs> Any other questions? Okay, let's thank the speakers.